Okay, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so we're going to run through a couple of things uh, with all the new features that Snapic is adding. One of them is the start screen and the track screen, which is such a cool little feature and we're going to get to share that with everyone. Um, Julio has a thing with Mirabus and I guess we have a couple of other like little bug fixes and little housekeeping things that we need to talk about. And then we're going to go over the AI experience, which is the big one. And finding images and making sure that um, we have really cool things to create with. And then we have a couple of offers to go through. And then at the very end, we have a gigantic announcement that I'm super excited for. Um, so let's go ahead and get <laughs> started. Uh, Julio, do you want to talk about the mirror booth? Yeah, so I mean, the first thing is is just a couple tweaks that we've made. Um, I don't know how many people here today uh, do mirror booths, but now we've added functionality to add like an on-screen keyboard. Um, so obviously, you don't have to plug in a keyboard with the mirror booth now. You can use Snapic on M1, M2, M3. Got a full on-screen keyboard. Um, there'll also be a tap to finish that that appears in the top corner. So obviously standing at the heart of a mirror booth, you'll be able to end the session with that. Um, and then what's part of the new track screen update um, is, which I'll show you on a slide in a bit, but we've now added the ability to change um, the layouts of the buttons. So now you won't just have the option as before where the buttons have been at the bottom, but you can now also move them to the middle or the top. So this is obviously great for mirror booth. The buttons are at like a, a reasonable height and not right at the bottom of the screen. So that's kind of the mirror booth stuff. Um, if Ryan, could you go to the slide that I can share my screen quickly? I think you've got to set it up too. There we go. Yeah, you should be able to do it now. <clears throat> So yeah, this will just show you how we've taken um, essentially what was just one screen where you had like an attract screen in the background and then you also had the, the experience buttons on screen. We've now split it out. So we've got the initial uh, attract screens. You can put whatever you want on there. Again, great for mirror booth. If you're having people, um, you want your, your attract screen running to obviously attract people to the booth and it doesn't have the, the buttons. We've, we've got a bunch of these that say tap to start which never really made sense up until now, because now you'd actually tap the screen and then it would then jump over to the next one where you have the experience buttons. And then, like I said, you can have them in the middle, the top or the bottom. Um, you can find that if you head over to the app options, is like the single um, panel in the, the middle of the screen. When you start the booth, like Ryan showing you, there's a new tab, the app options, and you'll be able to select if you want it at the top, middle or bottom. So that's just a little tweak that's helping mirror boost, but it's also, I think, improved the experience um, across the the normal <laughs> photo booths. Um, yeah, so that's the update there. And then I guess let's move on to the more exciting bits. Okay, so everyone's been wondering, what does this thing do? How fun it is? How exciting is it? Uh, we're get to, gonna get to go through all this stuff right now. Um, so the way how AI works is it's kind of split into two different versions. So we have this face swap version and the themes version. So we're gonna go ahead and do all of those uh, right now. And- Brian, <clears throat> sorry, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pause you there quickly because um, there are just some questions regarding what I just went over. Um, so oh, sure. someone asked if, if it's optional to have the split out, it is, you can have it run exactly how it is running currently or what you're used to. You just, um, don't select anything for photo booth. So now you'll have a track screen and photo booth on the app experience tab. So now if you just don't put anything, that's going to keep the experience the same. There's a button to toggle, um, to allow it to add it across. So you, uh, there's just a checkbox. You, you hit that checkbox and we'll use the same 
um, video image across the experience. So yes, you can keep it the same as it was, or you can split it out to the new version. Um, someone asked about mirror booth. So mirror booths generally are Windows based. We've never been able to really run them on like an iPad, iOS solution. So this is, we're talking now about, you know, um, M1, M2, or M3 Mac minis or MacBook Pros running your mirror booth. So you wouldn't necessarily connect an iPhone or an iPad because you'd need the touchscreen um, integration, which you'd get with a, a full um, MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, um, Mac Mini, that sort of thing. So yes, when, if, if you do have a, currently have a mirror booth, it would need to squat your Windows PC with one of those um, uh, Mac-based versions. Cool. I think we can move on there, right? Okay. Uh, back to AI, the fun stuff. So AI is going to be sort of in two different versions. So there's a face swap version and there's a themes version. Um, so the themes are kind of already preset. Uh, let's go ahead and start showing what this looks like. Let me share my screen. Whoops, that's not right. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start and create a new event. Here's the lovely little AI experience button. We're going to click that and then set up our little event. set it as now we're doing a slow rollout um brian can you hear me everyone can you hear me right yeah i can hear you cool yeah 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 so we're doing a small uh, a slow rollout so what happens is if you go onto our chat um and you can submit uh your just your name obviously an email will add you to the beta list and then obviously over time, we'll start releasing people onto the beta. This is, we wanna obviously just try and get as much feedback um, as we can and see how the models um, are working across different people um, and see just at volume. Uh, there's obviously, hopefully people are aware of with AR, there's this thing called um, uh, hallucination where it just sometimes does its own thing. Uh, so we've had to kind of train the models in a way that that works. I see everyone putting their emails in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to need to do it <laughs> not to this, the support not this through chat, the, not the, the chat. chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, through the yeah our support chat on the website, and, and they'll get you set up there. Um, so yeah, this is obviously something very new. It's in beta, and we're just going to test it out uh, and see how how it goes. So please do try it out once you get added and give us as much feedback as possible. Okay, right, so next we're gonna go to add AI filter. So I'm gonna do this just with the face swap first. So we're gonna click face swap and then we're gonna go into edit. And this is what we're going to upload so all you have to do is upload the source image and then upload the filter preview image. So the source image that I've already kind of done ahead of time is um, a little Taylor Swift photo. So we got this photo from Shutterstock. We're gonna, I'm gonna upload both just to this little face swap thing. And then you hit confirm. And then you're gonna go into your template library and set up I'm gonna do this as a square no frame just because that's what I've already predetermined. And then I'm gonna upload an overlay. And then I'm gonna click the AI filters. And then since this is the only one there, that's what it's automatically gonna choose. So we're gonna add face swap. And then we're gonna hit next.
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed through the rest of this and then uh, load the event in the system. So I'm not going to worry about an attract screen or anything like that. However, uh, this is where you would change the attract screen photo background and then the actual attract screen. So this is what we'll show. This is what Julio talked about earlier. Uh, you're going to upload the little animation here and then whenever they click it, that's what goes on there. Uh, as the background where the buttons are. However, the buttons are changed on the device itself. So you can't change the button location on here. Um, the people running your photo booth would have to do that. Uh, Ryan? Yeah, no, I just... I'm sorry, just zoom in the screen a little bit, like press plus, plus, plus. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so I also want to address, so Ryan's currently doing one of the versions of AR, we've got two. So the one will be face swap. This is to keep consistency. If you're doing like a corporate event, you have a reference image. And then what we do is you use AI just to do kind of like a, a mesh of the face and do a face swap. Um, we do have a second one, which is called AR transform, which I'll show you a little bit later. And that is a generative AR. So that's the one that has a lot more hallucination um, and a lot, I'm sure you've seen the, the images online of our examples, those are kind of more artsy um, and pretty much it changes the whole picture um, and just adds the likeness of that person to that generated image. So we have the two, Ryan's gonna go over face swap now and then we'll talk a little bit more about the generative AI um, stuff, which is the AI FX, um, the transform. So yeah, we'll get to that shortly. Okay, so we're going into, the SnapPick device that will have um, the AI on it. I'm just going to do this as configure camera as a front camera. And then I'm going to start it. And then this is where you can change the location of the buttons. So I'm just going to take a photo real quick. Actually, I'm going to take off my glasses. And then you're going to get prompted with this little uh, message that says your image will be processed with AI magic once you share. I'm just going to dismiss it. And then I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to stop sharing. And then I'm going to go back to the other event. And then two things will happen. Um, one, it'll save the image that was created. So that's the image that was that we just did. And then it face swapped me to on Taylor's face, which I love. I think this qualifies me to date Travis Kelsey now. Um, but yeah, so that's what that's what you would do for the face swap. So if you want everyone to have if you want everyone to have, <laughs> this is so damn funny. Uh, if you want everyone to have uh, a consistent face, this is where you would do that. <clears throat> and again, it's going to save that raw photo as well. That jawline is great. Um, no, so the preview does not show on the guest screen. Uh, whenever they type in the text message, they're gonna get two text messages. They're gonna get a text whenever the photo's ready and then whenever the AI is ready. So Ryan, we have changed that because we felt the flow didn't seem right if you go sure. for an AI booth to get both. So you'll get a message essentially when both your photo and your AI is ready. It will default to this, this page to see the AI and then be able to see the photo. And then we have a, a script that you can put in for the Microsoft if you'd like. Uh, to change it to say like AI and original or before and after will actually be after and before and then they can see the two versions um, your original and then obviously the AI version yes um, so you do need to be able to have internet on the device for the photo to be able to send out to the cloud um, however the photo is edited in the cloud uh, from there um, yes, there will be AI credits for this, and Julia will get to that in a minute. Um, and then Ryan, this someone one, is saying they can only hear you. Can everyone hear me as well, or can they only hear Ryan? You're 
you don't show that you're muted, so you should be fine. Okay, yeah, no, everybody yeah. can hear me as well. No, sorry, yeah. continue. Um, so it, uh, now I lost my check of thought. What the hell was I talking about? Yes, so it's only going to be uh, one photo per person. Um, so we're only be able to face swap this. I'm not necessarily groups. And Julio had mentioned to me that uh, groups, I believe, were taken out of all of the other theme photos. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. Um, let me share the correct screen now. So now that we did the first AI, uh, we're going to do the next one. So this one's face swap. We're going to go into AI filters. And then there's a couple of other versions. So there's holiday. With all the holiday photos, uh, we have a day of the dead one. And this is male, female. So you'll have to add both and then be able to select um which works out and then, and then as you can see with sorry ron i'm just gonna bug as you can see the tab on the top left that's face swap all the rest use generative ar so if using holiday style and in the various uh tabs within those those are it's all generative ar um filters so then we have color portraits color splash and then again male female uh the themes cyberpunk 1980s yearbook pirate astronaut male female and then victorian so victorian was the one that i posted yesterday uh and then fantasy uh, a couple of different wizards so we'll go ahead and do i'm gonna do the yearbook so i'm gonna click to add that I'm going to do 1980s and then I'll go ahead and do cyberpunk. And again, since I'm setting this up just for me, um, I'm going to select male. So then we'll go into, I'm actually going to get rid of Taylor. Sorry, Taylor. And then go down and I'm going to pick the portrait. <clears throat> Once again, click AI filters and then make sure everything is selected. Go to close and then save changes. And then now... I just want to address something quickly. Um, I see you have asked, um, someone asked about credits. Um, this is very tricky for us, as is why we're launching this in a closed beta. We have to um, essentially get an idea of scale. We aren't asked to make money on this particular feature. This is to enhance our packages. Um, so what we want to do ideally is have Enterprise and Enterprise Plus get free credits for all their events. Um, and then, you know, if you go over and above that uh, limit, whatever we add to the account, then you'd have to buy credits. Um, if you see across the web, um, doing AI isn't cheap. Uh, we have massive systems on servers off site, which is why we can't run these things locally on device. They have to be done on our servers with massive uh, GPU compute. And that takes a while. That's why these images don't happen instantly and they can't happen on device. So, all of these things kind of are right now um, culminating in us needing to to charge credits. And it's only just so that we can get to a point of understanding um, as to what this will cost us at scale. Um, and then we'll figure it out from there. But again, it's not necessarily for us to make money. It's just to enhance the whole experience that we are providing. So we'll know a little bit more down the line with our beta. Um, but what we are expecting is to uh, include um, some uh, credits with each kind of package. So we'll post a little bit about that further down the line in the next couple of weeks. So I'm taking all these three photos. And this is the point in time where you would be able to share with the guest and text to themselves. <clears throat> uh, someone's also asked, can you print if you use the sharing station as Marco said, uh, it will pull in all the AR photos and yes, you'll be able to print from there. Why is my screen acting up? I think right now it's not pulling into the gallery, but it is something we will be doing. Uh, 
uh, James, you joined, you joined the beta through through our chat on the on the website. Uh, you can just chat to one of the support team um, and tell them you'd like to be added, and then we'll be selecting and rolling out slowly over time. So these are the three photos that I just took that uploaded the raw versions, and then we're just going to wait for the system to complete them, and then they'll pop up here in AI. If anyone wants signed pictures of this, I'll be happy to do it after the program. <clears throat> so actually, I think if, yeah, so it's going to show that the five photos were taken. <clears throat> It's very cool. Um, yes. So uh, someone asked on the chat uh, when, how to hide the raw versions. Um, so yes. Yeah, so eventually uh, the photos will actually be able to be hidden. Yeah. So you can do the hide stills um, and that will, will hide the originals and just have AR. So this is going to be dependent. Um, how long will it take to create the AR photos? Um, as you can see, it is taking a bit of time because uh, we're processing the three now, but they should. Um, so it's basically, we're going to see now how we scale it out. I mean, it's for, from our testing, it's been, you know, 60 to say 90, 120 seconds. So like say one to two minutes is what you're looking at, but it obviously could be longer um, just depending on the different effects you choose we're using different workflows for each some are more complex than others um yeah so that's another thing is i did these things back to back um so that's probably why it's taken a little bit longer than the taylor one there we go look at ryan morris that is just fantastic <laughs> <clears throat> um and then another thing so we had also talked about uh does the camera quality mean anything? Yes, it absolutely means something. If you're going to give a low lit photo taken on your phone, probably not going to get as great a result than if you were to do, you know, a DSLR that has great lighting. So whatever you give it, you're going to get back. <clears throat> this one, I need to go blonde again because let me tell you, this looks fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I need that, I need that jacket. And I think I already have that belt. Well, I think that's all coming back into fashion now. So you probably went and getting that jacket, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it's already on order. And this one, I mean, my head looks a little small, but that's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, sometimes you're going to get really good results. Sometimes you're going to get maybe a result that isn't quite perfect, but you know, from our testing, it's, it's, it's looking good. Uh, yes, Kay, it's so created these, the whole scene. Sorry, Ryan. Yes, so the, these were done with generative AI, not the face swap. So this is going to give you something a little bit more, you know, robust than if you were to just give it a face swap. The reason why I enjoy the face swap is because you're getting a guaranteed image that comes back. <clears throat> Yeah, so if you want consistency, then you go with a face swap. If you want something really cool that's keeping the same style and theme, then you go with generative AR, so the AR transform. So face swap's always going to keep that same reference image and just do uh, like an AR face swap. And then, you know, the generative AR stuff is going to do a similar theme and then create multiple uh, photos. Uh, at the moment, right now, the themes cannot be uploaded on your own. Um, those are only predetermined from SnapPick, but the way around that is a face swap. <clears throat> All right, um, I yeah, so I can, a photo to see. Yeah, I'll do, an, I'll do another one. I'm not going to hook up my screen again because that's just far too much work. Ryan, you want to let me share my screen as well? I'll also share some examples. Sure.
actually do another one with my glasses off and see if that makes a difference. That's another thing. I think that it kept um, it kept my glasses on in all of them. Please excuse me. Um, you're all gonna see photos of me. So at the at the moment, you can't do groups just because it's a little inconsistent. Um, but I'm sure that will come eventually. Yeah, so we are working on groups. Groups is very tricky. Um, so yeah, just stay tuned. I think as AI gets better and better, you're going to see a lot more. Um, so you can see the different effects we got, like this was the original image. And then this is what it outputs. <clears throat> it's the same image, so you can see what what you get in terms of like a pirate one. This pirate one is really cool, um, Victorian style. The cyberpunk, and then he has another version. So you can see, like in this version, there's a artifact with obviously another foot. So this is something that can happen. <clears throat> uh, he has different versions of me, so there's the one that came out. Uh, he has another one of the same with me. If anybody knows what I look like. <laughs> Again, with me, different poses. So it does kind of keep, if you're smiling, um, it will keep that pose. Then there's also like a Christmas portrait one. That just looks like you. Hey, that just looks one. like you. Yeah, just a brown hair I mean, that, That's what you, that's what you want. <laughs> so yeah. Um, what's also cool is there's actually a different there's different statues. So we've done like marble, uh, bronze, that sort of thing. So it actually takes the image and then does a statue. These are really cool. Um, it even does the general AR stuff to the background. Um, so yeah, this is awesome. There's some more of the portrait ones. You can see the different outputs that you get. I do not have a beard. I wish I had a beard that nice. <clears throat> so yeah, Ryan, you can go again. Sure. Jump, um, me... You can jump back into yours. <clears throat> Here we go. So there's the second photo we did. So yes, even if you give it the same photo, you're still going to get a different image. And I actually really like those glasses. Where's the buy button for some <laughs> of this stuff? <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, so the first one, I was blonde. And then the second one, I got the little wavy hair Top Gun thing going on. And the other ones will come in shortly. Let's go ahead and add some of the Christmas ones. And so, yeah, do, while you're doing that, I'm also going to do a go for it, version. <clears throat> I also just wanted to add that, as you can see with the the one Ryan did initially, there was an overlay. So what's cool with this is you can kind of use the same pipeline as you know with Snapix. So you could create like a an, an overlay. For Christmas or whatever the theme is, or corporate event with your logos and stuff, and that'll still apply over the image. Um, so I'll jump into next kind of the AI experiences um, where you'll be able to set up um, where you can choose, like for example, select a specific character, and then you can in those characters have them select the type of character. So how this is great is if you're doing say a baseball card and you've got all the different baseball teams, you know, can have your guests choose a, the baseball team they love. And then potentially if you have the rights and you're doing this for that team, but you have the different players and then they can select the player they love and have, you know, their face swapped onto that. So the, the experiences side of it is also quite, um, quite cool. I'm going to add a couple more photos of the Christmas ones. 
So this one, um, you're, you're still in the, in the app and it'll let you choose just like all the other filters operate. <clears throat> We're going to do a couple and also, things. actually, this is a good segue into one of the questions: was, is there um, a way to choose regular photos and AR? Yes. So you could actually set up one that's a normal photo, one that's AI, uh, one that's a face swap, or whatever, and you can have all those different templates in one event. Um, so we made it quite flexible. Uh, yes, we'll be providing samples and all of this in our marketing packs um, that you'll be able to use. Just a couple hundred people watch me take I pictures think, of myself all day. <clears throat> Ryan, did you do those photos with your glasses on previously? They're asking. Yes, um, some did, some didn't. So the ones on the way uh, will not have glasses. <clears throat> and I probably just overloaded this thing with a million photos right now, but. Just make sure that these things uploaded. So yeah, we're at 16 now. <clears throat> so here are the other ones that I just took. This is just too much of a good thing. And then wait for the other ones to come. So what I would do, so someone asked about using a celebrity photo. Um, so I licensed the photo with um, Shutterstock. Um, and, and actually this is also a nice little segue as well. Uh, what is a great opportunity is to utilize the National Gallery. Um, so anything on the National Gallery open access, you have access to quite literally hundreds of thousands of images um, that you can use for free. Uh, so a couple of the ones that I used for uh, the Mona Lisa, George Washington, I posted a couple of teaser photos. Those were all done from uh, the National Gallery. Um, so that one's really fantastic and a great resource. Um, so again, you could do something with a little uh, arty uh, kind of that way. Um, the other option is uh, to utilize um, Dolly 3 or Shutterstock. So you can utilize a couple of other, um, a couple of other uh, photos that you create yourself with AI generation. Um, so that's always kind of fun. Um, so let's go back to yeah. If anybody uses ChatGPT, um, if you're paying for the premium version for twenty dollars a month, you can use Dali three inside of ChatGPT. So you can just select it and say, hey, please create an image and then you give it these parameters and then it'll spit out an image that then you could use. Um, you obviously still have to be quite cognizant of copyright so you, in terms of likeness. So if it like looks like Superman, then there's also obviously a problem of it being too like Superman and therefore using the brand. So it's very, very important that um, you just keep um, that in mind when you're creating these images. Um, so someone asked, where do you go to access the National Gallery? Um, you're going to go ahead and click, uh, you can just type in open access National Gallery and then it'll uh, populate. So you can search, um, browse the collection. And then you'll see tons and tons and tons of photos available. Um, so I don't know if anyone ever, has ever seen the um, the uh, what you call it? The um, so actually, I do have a commercial license for the Taylor Swift photo, though that photo that I had was a paparazzi photo, not anything from an album or anything like that. Um, but I, I don't know if anyone's ever seen like the guy like doing this, doing like the little meme, or you have like the woman like that's laying like this, and they make memes with that stuff. Um, so it, with those instances, those photos came from the National Gallery. So this is all a whole bunch of um, fun stuff that you can use. I would stray away from using Jesus a little bit, but George Washington, fun, 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 fun. You just type in George Washington. And then we can take this little photo, already has a frame. And you know, 
do a little face swap on it. So you'll see which ones are in the public domain, and then you can download it from here. Let's see if any more have come through. Oh, here we go. How fantastic. We love giving gifts. <clears throat> My teeth look like a little deck. I don't, I don't think they normally look like that. <laughs> and then there's me playing with paint. I think we're still missing a few or a <clears throat> oh it looks like i clicked the wrong one there's the day of the dead one accurate For those who so, didn't hear, uh, go ahead. I think someone's asked again just about printing. You can print this if you pull it into the gallery and you print from there. Oh, sorry, the sharing station. And actually, on that note, for everyone, I'm sure everyone's kind of had problems with needing internet for the sharing station and asked us for quite a while to do a local one that is currently in the works. Um, We've spent a lot of time on it to make it rock solid um, and it's looking awesome. Uh, so we should have a local sharing station within the next, I don't want to give it an exact date, but pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Never give an exact date. <clears throat> uh, so yes, it can only be done from the sharing station because once you take the photo, it still obviously has to get processed and then sent to the user, and then that gets pulled into the sharing station to print. So you'd have, have to obviously move people over to the sharing station to then go and um, print. As Demir is just on to there. And then I think people are asking like about a dif like different like cartoons and um, comic, that sort of thing. We will be adding filters um, as we go. So if you have any suggestions and you want to send that over to us through the chat, um, happy to hear, and then we'll look at adding. In Snappic from your account, not on this chat. Yeah, <laughs> not on this chat. Awesome. Well, let's uh, keep it moving along. So I think that pretty much covers all of the new AI stuff. Uh, Yes, so that's another thing. The face swap goes pretty quick because it's only changing one part of the image versus um, the AI generative, which is the whole thing. So that would explain the why it takes so long. Um, if actually we want to do, um, I guess I can do a face swap. I can do one more face swap. What should I face swap into? So video may be possible in the future right now if you can imagine how long it's taking for one singular frame video is made up of hundreds and sometimes thousands of frames if you can imagine needing to process those frames so a couple hundred frames you're going to be waiting a long time um, and that's why kind of video in the real sense of ai isn't um, quite possible yet but it's not to say that it won't be in the future Um, I actually think I can do this with Dolly. <clears throat> Let me pull up this one more thing. Let me share my screen. So I went into chat and I asked it to create a photo of Glinda the Good Witch in Oz. 
I cannot wait to face swap into this. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is let's start from the beginning again. I'm going to go into edit. Oh, you know what? Uh, actually, let me do this. Go into face swap. Click edit. And I'm going to upload the filter preview. Oh, I got to change the format real quick. I knew there were rats and cats in there. <clears throat> um, so we will post this recording after, so you'll be able to rewatch if you've missed. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and create the square. Then I'm only going to select face swap. And then hit save changes. Let it process those changes. I'm going to go into my app and I'm going to refresh the event. Perfect. Then we'll go into the test session. You know, I wonder, um, actually, let me make sure it's in here. There's that. What I just took. <clears throat> and then let's see the face walk come through. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> so yes, um, this is how I wake up every single day. <laughs> so again, the face swap will go much faster than the generative AI. I mean, look at that. Too much fun, absolutely too much fun. I don't know if anyone wants to jump on and ask any questions. Um, you're welcome to tap the button. Gerardo, Gerardo you're on the air. Do you have a, a question for us? Okay, if anyone has a question, go ahead and push the button. So the guests will get a, a text telling them when their photo is ready, and that Correct. will automatic, automatically be on the sharing station. Will both photos yes. be on the sharing station? Yes, for right now, um, we are making some changes to the sharing station um, to allow, I mean, it's also been a long awaited feature to allow multiple sends um, and that sort of thing. So we, we're doing quite a bit of changes to the sharing station. So right now it does pull in um, all the photos, but we are going to look at maybe tabbing it out um, and then being able to hide and stuff. So that's we, we're just going to kind of wait for feedback, I guess, from everyone um, to see how, you know, how the response is and what people are looking for. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, right now you'll get both images in the sharing station. Okay. Awesome. Anyone else have a question? Hello. Okay, so two Hello. quick questions. First of all, I know you're saying um, it's just in beta now, but how long, and I know you can't give an exact date, until you think it will actually be uh, really out there for everyone to use? A pro are we talking like three weeks, three months, just an idea? I mean, look, we're hoping within the next couple of weeks that we'll be able to give it to everyone, but I think as with anything like, you know, in general with beta, it's hard to to kind of give a solid answer because it's used now to test. And I think especially with AR, because of how, you know, 
tricky it is in terms of what results we get. It's not really something we can control. We'd want to get a bit of a better idea across um, a bit more volume before we make a, um, a statement on that. So we're we hoping it's not long, but I think anyone that has access will be able to give it a good go and give us feedback and then and we can take it from there. Okay, and the other question is, um, so say we do a face swap um, and then the picture, you know, it's processing, they still enter their credentials, their email, their, their text, whatever it may yeah. be, and then they leave the booth and the next session can start, correct? Yeah. Now, yeah, so as soon as they've hit share, it will, it's already being processed and the next session can begin. Now, again, hypothetically, let's say it takes two minutes to process. If I have a nonstop booth, by the time my 10th person goes up there, does that mean it might take 20 minutes for that person to get their picture or not necessarily? No, not quite. So, no, no. So our infrastructure, and uh, I mean, I'm speaking from a very rudimentary perspective because I'm not part of the dev team, but the way we've set it up is to kind of do it more so like concurrently. So it's not necessarily that it's gonna scale in the way that like you are saying, like everybody using it and then it just hits a one long queue. So um, yeah, we're hoping to keep around that time. Um, but again, it's gonna see, we're gonna see kind of now with scale um, what, what happens and then obviously scale up as we need to. And that's again, one of the reasons why we can't necessarily give you an exact price um, on credits and how many credits you're gonna be given because we need to just see you know, if we need to build the infra infrastructure to scale so that you're not waiting three or four minutes, five minutes for an image, that then we'll have to do, and that's going to then incur more costs um, on that side. So we're just trying to be a bit cautious with that. Um, yeah, and we'll see how it goes. But like I said, we, we're not doing this as a an additional profit um, area. It's to, it's to get you guys more value within. And obviously, hopefully, you keep buying enterprise. <laughs> that's... That's what we want. So okay, and actually, yeah. last, one more. I sorry, I do have one last question. With the face swap, say for example, you did Taylor Swift. Does it take into account uh, ethnicity and skin tone? So, for example, uh, would Taylor Swift, if an African American person did it, would her neck and ears and everything change as well? So, we, with all of our generative AI stuff, um, and somewhat with the face swap. Um, more so the generative AI, we've tested it across different ethnicities and, um, you know, male, female and all of that. That's why we kind of have the prompts of male and female, just because it's a lot easier to direct the prompt in that way. So that's, again, part of the reason we're doing all this testing in beta is to kind of understand, tweak the models, make sure that it works across, because that's the point. We want to make sure it works across every type of person, essentially. Um, so yes, we've, we've worked hard to, to get that right, but, um, we're going to need to see now, um, at scale and see what we, we can do to make it better. So another thing that I have to say about this is I fed, um, hold on, I'm doing two more face swap images. Um, another thing about that is I fed into the face swap system, um, a source image that was darker in skin tone and then took a photo of me and it kind of blended it in between. So um, it it's pretty accurate when it comes to stuff like that. So I was very impressed with how it reacted to skin tones. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, you might find for some things like it made me a lot thinner than I am. <laughs> so you, that's it. It's going to be different kind of results across the board. Um, but we're just trying to get as consistent as possible. So I, I also had chat in the in the midst of the questions. I had chat create another image because I just had to recreate a second one, um, just in case you don't like you know this one. Let's see what this one comes up with. And then this one, I said, um, give me an image of a chocolatier in a chocolate factory, dressed in a burgundy velvet suit, surrounded by steampunk elements. And then whenever we go in here to see it does an awesome little face swap, which I probably could win Drag Race with that. Great little entrance <laughs> look. And then to wow. me, the to me, the face swap image is the place to go. Um, it's just a little bit more accurate. And especially if you're selling to corporate, you're kind of really able to give them exactly what they want for approval. Um, so that's going to be a whole new thing is how to start selling this stuff. 
But yes, uh, I think we have time for one more question. Hey, is there a hey is is there a limit on the number of face swap images that can get uploaded to uh, as options, or can we upload like uh, hundreds of face swap options? I mean, that's a very good question. I would probably say there's not necessarily a hard um, like limit right now, but I'm not sure how feasible that would be, and I'm not. We haven't tested with like a hundred options, so I can't actually give you a. A, a okay. clear answer for that but yeah there's not a hard limit if that if that helps okay perfect thank you awesome um a couple of things uh with the black friday offers um those are available on the website now pro plan is 399 a year uh, enterprise plan 1124 and then enterprise plus 2899 if you are on the enterprise plan I would really recommend going to the Enterprise Plus plan just because of all the things that you can do. Um, whenever you were seeing my screen, um, my SnapPick is fully branded to my business, not necessarily SnapPicks. So whenever we um, send out links, it has my brand, not everyone else's. And that's kind of, I think, makes a huge difference. Um, so just some of the things that, um, some of the things that can be accomplished. Julio, do you have anything else? <clears throat> Um, no, I do not. Unless there's any other um, any, any other questions. Then I think you wanted to make a big announcement. <laughs> um, uh, Hello, David. Yeah. Oh, hi. Um, I, my, my name's David. I'm in the UK. Um, and um, hi, David. Uh, hi. Uh, just asking that, um, say, for example, I'm just a bit confused about the uh, the licensing. Say, for example, because soccer is massive in the UK. So a lot of these people want to be their, you know, their fabulous football heroes. So if I had, you know, the, in the foot, soccer team, there's 11 players. So would I need to get a license for each player? Uh, yeah, so that's the thing. A, a license from the club. Um, cause yeah, you I were, think it's the you club were. that owns the numbers and the names effectively. <clears throat> right. But I could get, yeah, chat, like, I could get chat to design something similar. Is that right? Get so this is always a very, yeah. So it's very tricky and we can't speak, um, cause we obviously aren't lawyers, but in terms of the, the, um, the kind of test for the, all of this is likeness. So in terms of some characters, as soon as there's likeness, like I know I'm not going to mention the name of the wizard. Everybody knows the wizard. But yeah. he, in, if you're doing stuff for them, um, you know, like Warner Brothers is like super strict on likeness. So if you do stuff very similar, then, you know, it, they have a problem with it. So if you're looking at likeness, it, it, it's very dependent and unfortunately, we can't give you an exact answer because this is uh, probably one of the the, the like most um, debated things online right now um, right. because of how generative AI is using uh, a lot of likeness from different characters and stuff. So it's very tricky and to be safe, um, you know, you, you would probably need to get routes from that particular team. Um, and hey, you could go and approach, you know, the best team in England, like, you know, Liverpool and, uh, <laughs> get rocks to use it. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that just about covers it. Um, so lastly, we have a little little announcement. Um, this so last year we were able to do this um, for I think six cities. Uh, and in January, we're going to be doing Photo Booth Live 2.0, uh, January 14th in Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm really excited to do this. We're going to be doing a section on uh, creating stuff like this for AI. Uh, Kelly Haney is going to do uh, dynamic pricing and why you should get pricing off your website. Um, a big thing that I've been asked is how to price AI experiences specifically. So we're going to go over pricing AI and doing proposals and all that other sort of stuff um, 
at Photobooth Live 2.0, and I'm so excited to do it. And it's last year was a lot of fun, and this year will um, be even more fun. Um, <clears throat> yes, um, we did stuff. Um, well, Photobooth Live includes stuff that is in 360 as well. Yes, um, we really um, won't be focusing too much on 360 this go around. Um, anyone that went to Photobooth Live uh, at any of the ones that we did it um, the last go around, we obviously strayed a couple of times um, and every conversation that we had was different with the groups that we were in. So for example, um, you know, whatever we talked about in Atlanta, we necessarily didn't talk about in Philadelphia and same thing that happened in Sydney. They were all different conversations. That's kind of the beauty of it. Um, so I'm very excited to do that. If you want to click the little learn more button, it'll bring you to the website. Um, and other than that, I think that that's about it. Um, if you enjoyed today's snap session, feel free to tip us. Uh, we would really appreciate it. Um, we put a lot of work into this. <laughs> um, and then if anyone has tipping Ryan, questions, by the way, you, you're not um, tipping Snapic. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, the buttons go somewhere. The button, the, actually, Julio and Demir, you can click the buttons. Uh, they go somewhere. Uh, little little Taylor Swift Easter egg because this is Ryan's version. Um, so, anyways, um, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to email us. Or if you have a question for Snapic, go ahead and put it in um, put it in the Snapic chat. But thank you so much, everyone. We really enjoyed this. I have no clue what time we started. Oh, we're right at an hour. Look at that. How fantastic. On the dot. I think someone was asking um, when do you do the mirror screens show up? When do they show up? Um, could you elaborate on that? Uh, it was from Rodney. Oh, when, when is it live? So everything's live now. Um, so if you download the new app and you go onto app experience on your dashboard, you'll be able to add in the new screens. And then if you wanted to change where the buttons are laid out um, on 1.29, uh, you'll see app options are there. Um, and then on the app experience side, you'll set up the two different screens. So that is all live now. Um, and we've also improved the slideshow quite a bit. So that is now live and I think a lot more solid. Um, and then, yeah, we've just got a couple of things for, planned for next year. Um, some big things planned for the beginning of the year. So we're going to do another one of these in, I think, Feb, and then we'll give you a little bit more on that. Aubrey, I hope the slide shows much better now because we've spent a lot of time um, working on it. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if you want to allow, you know, maybe one last question. If people want to jump um, in. Andrew. Yeah. Uh, yes, we will be at the expo. Okay. Anybody, last question? When you said you improved the slideshow, is it the beta 2.0 slideshow or the slideshow that's in the box with the uh, microsite? No, so the, the 2.0, um, the actual app we've, well, it's a Chromium app, we built that and made it a lot more uh, stable and reliable. So that should be working a lot better now. Alipa, click the button. There you go. I did. Hi. Okay, so hey. I want to wrap my head around this. I can use the GIF and then the AI and then just regular photo uh, options when we set up the event for the group photos. For group? Well, just, so, you know, because sometimes people are like, I want to do the AI. It's like, okay, well. We don't do the AI with group photos. It's individual. Well, I want to try, you know, those people. So I just want to know, like, mm. that there'll be the three options, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you could technically do like still get first AI video, all of it together. Hi, I have a very quick question. Hey. Um, I put it in the chat, but there was so many people talking, I don't know if it was answered or not. Um, so my question is around data. Um, so for, for talking sake, if my client is a travel agent, and just hypothetically, if you had different locations, so you had AI options, which were beach holidays or city breaks or Disneyland, when we extract the data at the end of the event, can we then say, this is Ryan, keep his email address, and this is the option he chose, so that the travel agent could then target them with offers or promotions for city breaks or beach holidays? I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, I'll double check this with the team, but as far as I know, you could, um, when you download the analytics, it has like the image attached to that person, so you'd be able to see um, what what they selected. As far as grouping it into that template, that I don't think is an option right now, but it's definitely something we can look at doing. Um, but I'll, we'll, I mean, you can drop us a message on the live chat and we'll just confirm that. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, you, you would have a list of all of them and what photos they're linked to. So technically, you could you could go through the data and um, and provide that back to them um, at an upsell, of course. But in terms of actually uh, grouping it right now, that isn't happening. But it's a good idea. Awesome. Well, no thank more you so questions. much, everyone. Yeah, thank you so it. much. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Bye.